Well, let's get back into lecture mode here and cover two topics, data sources and data destinations in the data flow task. So what we'll do, we'll do data sources in this video, and then we'll do data destinations in the next video. So we're going to take a look at the seven different types of built-in data sources in this video, and when we would use each one. Next video, still be in lecture mode, then we'll just cover the destinations. Okay, so what I'm talking about, just so that you are familiar, is when we are inside a data flow task, there's that little data flow sources tab. And you can see the little guys right here, right there. Okay, that's them. That's what we're going to focus on here. So uh, I've just got a little table here. This is going to be a, a fairly straightforward video, not too much to it. And we'll just step through each one, kind of walk straight through them here. So let's just start at the top. First one listed is the ADO net source. Now I've seen this listed a couple of different ways. I've seen it listed and it is listed in the documentation as ADO net source. Now some of you might be wondering, well, why doesn't he have the period there? ADO.net. Well, it's not what's in the documentation. And if you look right here on the actual screen, sorry, that's not listed there. You see, it's missing the little dot here. So it's really an ADO.net source. I don't know why the dot is missing. I, I don't know. It's kind of curious if you ask me, but it is ADO.net in the documentation as well. Now the idea of the ADO.net, ADO.net source here, is that any .NET Support an interface that you can work through, a .NET OLEDB provider, a .NET ODBC driver. You can actually use that as a data source in your data flow. Uh, this used to be called the old data reader in SSIS 2005. So this just simply replaces that. Now you've got the single ADO.NET source. You can use any ADO.NET data provider, uh, whether it be OLEDB, uh, ODBC drivers, any of those, you can use that. And I'm going to hold off on a full explanation of when you would use that one until a couple more have been passed, particularly the OLEDB source. Now the second one here, let's talk about the Excel source here. This is the ever popular, right? We all have Excel data. So we're dealing with worksheets. Uh, this goes all the way up to Authis 2007, which was the most recent one as of SQL Server 2008. Um, at this point, when I record this video, it is November 2009. I had to look at my watch. That's pretty sad. Um, <laughs> and I, SQL Server 2008 R2 is currently in CTP, or beta, as we are all more familiar with the term. Whether it will natively support Office 2010, not 100% sure, but I can say that the release of 2008 R2 is coinciding with Office 2010, so I have a strong suspicion that we will be up to Office 2010. I have not tried Office 2000 yet, uh, was rather 2010. I had my fill of Office 2000. <laughs> Uh, so Excel sources, you can actually use as a data source, you can use an entire worksheet. Um, for those of you who are more savvy with Excel, you know that you can name ranges and that one worksheet could actually have several named ranges. When we are inside of X, the data source, the Excel data source, we will be able to treat those as a table and we can actually select from them. So I'll show you how to do that in one of the upcoming videos here after we get through the destinations. Let's take a look then at the flat file source here. Uh, this is pretty standard. Sorry, a little arrow there. Uh, you know, everybody's used to this one as well. Uh, or if you aren't, then you probably will be. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you're going to be doing this if you're exporting from one system and importing into another. It's the most common time we would be using the, te the flat file source. Now, I've used the flat file source several times thus far in the course. It, the extension of the file makes no difference. You can have a .csv file that you see right here. 
that is, and that's supposed to stand for comma, separated values. But you could actually have them be tab separated or column width separated. It, it's not the extension that matters to SSIS. You would go in and you, when you define your flat file connection manager, you define what the delimiters are. So the extension doesn't even have to have an extension. It's the content that matters, not the extension of that file. Now the OLADB source that you see, sorry, right here, this for uh, those of you who are working with a SQL Server as a source, this is your guy. So including SQL Server, right? So this is what you will use. When we get into the next video, we're going to have a SQL Server destination. There's no SQL Server source though. So this is your SQL Server source. So this is any OLADB provider you can use the OLADB source. Uh, so, you know, OLADB provider, given the choice, by the way, if I'm allowed to connect with either ODBC or OLADB, and, they, they, and if they both do the same thing, if they both allow the same commands, then I generally want to go with the OLADB. ODBC is somewhat of an older technology. We generally today want to go through the OLADB. Not always the case. Not everything exposes uh, the OLADB providers. Then you go through the ODBC, and that's fine. So that kind of begs the question, when would I use each one of these top four? Obviously, Excel and the flat file are covered simply by the nature of what type of file it is. But so you get the choice between the ADO net source and the OLADB source. Okay? So the difference really is not much. Uh, between the two, I can do everything with the ADO net source that I can do with the OLADB source. Because the, the ADO.net source allows me to access all of the installed OLADB providers, I can do all of those things with the ADO net source. Okay? So the only thing I can't do here with the OLADB source I can't access the ODBC drivers that are on the system because that is not OLADB. So it's a little bit confusing. I would typically say if you're using OLADB, use the OLADB source. Don't go with the ADO net source. Right? So for if I'm connecting to a SQL server, to DB2, to Oracle, Informix, whatever my source is, if I have OLADB straight to it, I'm using an OLADB source unless the documentation or whatever client that I'm working with has specified otherwise. Now the raw file source, we're going to have to talk about that one a little more in the next video. This will consume a raw file as is. Raw files are created by the raw file destination, which we'll talk about in the next video on destinations. And then the XML source, you know, if you're dealing with an XML file uh, or XML data that's stored in a variable, this is what you would actually use as the source. Now, there's one more built-in data source that's not listed in that previous list, and it's called the script component transformation. Or I, most people, if we're talking amongst ourselves at a conference or a user group, we would just say, yeah, drag a script component on there. The script component, as you can see from the little, uh, little screenshot that I put in right here, all I did to get this screenshot, I, I put a data flow task on, went into the data flow task, I went into the transformations tab, and I simply dragged a script component. It's not in the sources, it's not in the, the destinations, it's in the transformations. So I simply drug it onto the surface, dragged it, drug it, <laughs> I don't know which is right, and it pops up this box, and you can see it can be either a source or a destination or a transformation. And what you're going to be doing with that is you're going to be able to write C Sharp or Visual Basic, and as you can see, somewhere, if I can find my pen, there it is, sorry. <laughs> uh, we're going to cover that guy in Chapter 7 when we have a whole chapter devoted to working with .NET. 
Uh, these are not, also just to close this out, these are not the only available data sources. Uh, you can get free OLEDB providers, you can get free ODBC drivers, you can go download additional connectors, additional data sources, uh, salesforce.com, Teradata. Uh, you can even write your own if you simply want to spend the time to do it. It would be quite consuming to do so. So if, like for example, there is uh, no built-in provider for your piece of software. Let's say that you're using uh, in an old version of Informix and there's no built-in OLEDB provider in the SQL Server installation that will help you. Well, hop on over to IBM's website or get into your search engine of choice and start typing in things like SSIS DB2 or SSIS Informix OLEDB provider. And you're going to find companies that will sell those to you. You might be lucky. <laughs> find some open source ones that you can download for free. Uh, maybe pop over to codeplex.com, see what they might have. That's Microsoft's open source community. Uh, but you, you can find a lot of these. So before you start writing your own custom sources, you know, spend the time to, to search around and see what you can find. So I'll tell you what, I think that's it. It's fairly simple, like I said, straightforward. We'll look at the destinations in the next video. A little more to it, but still not too difficult. So I'll see you here in just a couple of seconds.